So before we go to the whiteboard, where it will be a lot easier to explain, I want to clarify a couple of the terminology, a couple of the terms that you might come across as you're doing your research. So the first one is dis distributed generation. So this refers to that people like yourself would produce power somewhere downstream in the electricity grid. The opposite of distributed generation would be a central generation in a power plant whereby there's one large producer and from that central point everything flows down through the grid towards you. So if you are producing at your residence power and feeding it back into the grid, that means distributed generation. Then decentralized energy refers to the same thing. So decentralized means the opposite of centralized. And then on-site generation is what you're doing. Distributed energy resources, DER, is another term that you often come across. And if you are producing power locally at your residence, you are a DER, right? And if you would then include a battery bank, so an energy storage system in your DER, then you become a distributed energy storage system. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's go to the whiteboard and let's make a drawing, which you always find much easier to talk with and to explain with than words. So we start out with the system that we just looked at, right? So let's assume we have a hybrid inverter system with our four components. So the loads, the batteries, the PV, and the grid, and we use the same color coding. So let's zoom out a little bit and place this system here in the top corner. So this system is a distributed energy system, actually a DESS, because you've got storage in there as well. Now let's assume that all of your neighbors, all of the people around you are using the conventional model of uh, power consumption. So they are all connected to one single grid, uh, to the centralized energy system. And both this group of people, so all the other people and yourself, you are connected to the power plant. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. Now, as long as the power plant is up and running and all the lines are active, everything is fine. Your neighbors are just consuming power from the power plant and you are doing whatever you want to do, right? You have your solar production, you have your battery energy storage, your hybrid inverter, you can take power from the grid, you can feed it back into the grid, you can do whatever you want and everything is perfectly fine. The problem kicks in, the problem starts when the power plant goes down, when there's no power available from the plant, uh, which automatically means that all of your neighbors, they don't have any power anymore, right? They are without power. But you know that you have your battery storage and your solar production with your hybrid inverter, so you are more flexible. And this could actually lead to a situation whereby you have an excess amount of energy available because the sun is high up and you're not using that much, your batteries are full, and you want to feed power back into the grid. Now, this is slightly problematic because let's assume people are working on the lines. They assume that since the main power plant is down, there shouldn't be any live connections. None of the power lines should have any power on them, right? But the problem is there is actually, because you are trying to feed power back into the grid. So the problem is if somebody actually wants to work on the lines, they might get a bit of a shock and they're not going to like that. So we want to avoid that. And this is where the anti-islanding kicks in. You want to avoid that during a power outage, you'll be a small island, a small pocket of, uh, of electricity that's trying to feed power back into the grid. So anti-islanding ensures that if the grid is down, that you are not able to feed power back into the grid. So it does that by disconnecting the line between the grid and your hybrid invert or whatever system you have, it disconnects the grid from your distributed energy storage system. So in that way, you can do whatever you want. You can use the power from your batteries, the power from your solar array. You can do whatever you want and you can happily run your system and have, enjoy all the benefits from having such a nice setup. But then the people working on the line, they are not bothered by you. So there's actually there are no live lines, there's no electricity on the grid because they know, well, your anti-islanding function has kicked in and the power plant is down, so now they can safely operate, they can safely work on the lines. So I think that's enough you need to know about the anti-island.